Hiya folks, apologies for the lack of vlog uploads in the past few months. It's been a hectic few months. To be honest, it would probably be more precise to say that it's been a hectic 12 months. The reason for today's vlog is because a couple of days ago I asked myself a question that it took quite a bit of work to figure out the answer to. That question was, how come I'm two years deep into this project and it only feels like I'm just about to start now? In order to get any sort of halfway decent answer to that question, I've got to reflect back on to how all this actually started. It's really quite hard for me to get my head around the idea that everything, everything that I can see around me now, everything about my life, everything I do on a day-to-day -day basis, back in 2014, that was just a figment of my imagination. It's also pretty crazy to contemplate that no fairy godmother turned up waving a magic wand. The bloke that I see in the mirror every morning made all of this happen by himself. We live and die by the decisions we make. In normal life, we can be pretty fluid. And if something's not working for us, we can kind of chop and change to an extent. In business, however, though, it's generally a good idea to think long and hard about a decision, make it, and from there on in, stick to the bloody plan. Now, why is planning so important to answering my question? Well, it's really bloody hard to stick to the plan when you know that that plan is making your own life difficult for the start. Now, the original plan was always to create a training facility. Why create a training facility? I mean, that's a question I've asked myself many times. We've got so many of the Forestry Commission trail centres in this country and around this area. I mean, they start off on the, the greens and blues and reds and they have that kind of easing everybody up and easing everybody into it. But if you think about it, all of that's like gravel and it's, it's surfaced with kitty litter, or not all, but most of it. And yeah, you get to do some tabletops and you get a go at a few berms and an idea of riding downhill and, and some routes. But for some reason, it's thought that that's where mountain biking stops. That's not where mountain biking stops. You see, I just can't agree that once you've ridden a kitty littered orange three dot, essentially four cross track, that that's it, mountain biking's done, you've completed it. That's only the beginning. Just like riding a bike, once you've gained a bit of confidence, it's time to take the training wheels off that surface tracks provide and get into the dirt. Where trail centres end, now begins. My original plan though was never just to chuck you straight in at the deep end. We start off with magic bus that doesn't have any features on it, it's just the dirt, the roots and the ruts to get you into it. From there we've got elementary that gets into single log size features. Some of them are in old school BMX whoops, some of them are just straight up steps. Now that you're starting to build a bit of confidence, it's time to get on to get to the chopper. This is where we get you an introduction into step downs, single bike length gaps, and your choice of jump size. After that, it's time to ramp things up a little bit with gasoline alley. We've got gaps into dirt berms. We've got steps into a dirt berm with a step back out again. And then towards the end, we get things a little bit steeper and techy. Got gasoline alley on lockdown, now it's time for GAP. This is the first real gap jump on site. It's on a hip and it's 12 foot log to log. And this kicker takes you to a hip landing into a steep chute. Double down is just unashamed old school fun. Across the whole of the park, there's every single incremental sized feature to get you into jumping this. Right now, you're watching from a camera that's only 13 feet away from me on the landing. Just over there on GAP, you've already learnt to jump 12 feet. This is just one foot more and elevated. This is track number seven of a planned 22. If it's this loud and rowdy now, imagine what it's going to be like when we turn the volume up to 14. 
So what makes this an answer to my original question? Well, back in 2013, the first ever thing that I drew on a piece of paper was a step down into a raised gap jump and then down into a wooden ladder fly out. This track is the first thing that I ever thought of before I'd even got a piece of land. However, for very obvious reasons, I couldn't just take people from trail centres and start them here. It had to come from the beginning. So, there we have it. The reason that I feel like I'm only just getting started is because Electric Landlady was the first ever thing that I sketched out onto a piece of paper for my own bike park, like back in 2013. And I'm only just building it now. In a few weeks, that'll be complete and ready to open. And straight after that, I'm going to jump straight on and start on a track called Beggar's Canyon. Now, Beggar's Canyon is a much, much easier build and my life is way less complicated at the moment. So that one will be open up shortly too and we can move on to the next one. Yeah, but I made a promise to myself. I promised that I was going to start my place where trail centres ended. So I had to come from Magic Bus and come through every stage to get you up to Electric Landlady. That way I can feel like I've got a proper training facility where you can practice and train and gain the skills to get up to these kind of tracks. And hey man, if you think that Electric Landlady's rowdy or gnarly, <laughs> I'm already just getting started.